Now we got Hassan, that guy Ali, who who is angry that Muhammad beat Aisha because Muhammad is in hell. Why did Why did your God say you can beat women? Chapter four, verse thirty-four. Well, I'll give you the context. Of you. I think you already know. Yeah, you the can give me any context you want. I have Bukhari, I have Muslim, I have your scholars. Yeah. Why did your prophet beat Aisha? Why did your prophet, prophet beat her? Sahih Muslim 21 27. He struck her at the chest and hurt her. Why did your 54 year old prophet hurt a nine year old? Are you going to let me explain it? Are you going to answer? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, he ran. Why you? Why is your name Ahmed? Are you Ahmed because you were named a Muslim and you are a Muslim or you left Islam? So I said, I'm considering my religion now. Okay, good. And if you're honest, let's see. So you're reconsidering Islam. Why? What happened? Well, uh, I've seen some uh, debunks of how Muhammad uh, believed in the Bible. You saw some what? Some debunks. Oh, you're the guy that was the Ahmadiyya, right? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, that was you. See, someone rem remembered you. I see. You're the Ah, now I remember. Sorry, dude, I forgot. You're the it's guy okay. who's telling me that Murza Ahmed is uh, the Messiah. Okay, now the light switch went on. But speak louder in the mic. What's up? Sorry, sorry my friend. Um, I went to my clerics and they couldn't answer your question. <laughs> I think you're you're just pulling my leg, dude. I think you're lying. You're just playing games. You went to the clerics and they couldn't answer what? And you said that um, Muhammad affirmed the Torah and they couldn't answer this question. They just okay, said this so, you're lying. So what did, what did they do? They didn't deny it? Well, they just said that you're lying, but obviously this is not. Okay, so did they give you uh, verses that I'm lying? No. Okay, so Okay, so that's one. Okay, so you remember that. Good, at least you remember that. By the way, this guy said that his uh, Imam Ahmed died on the toilet. Now, the Ahmadiyya said, oh, that's a lie. That's fabricated. It didn't happen. Well, he sucks being you. All right. That's what it says. You know, that's what the, the rumor is that he died on the toilet. But anyway. Okay. So how can I help you, sir? Well, um, so I'm just not sure because I'm a spiritual person. I believe that there has to be some religion in the world, but I don't know which one to convert to. But, I mean, it's very, very easy. Is there anyone more beautiful, more radiant, more magnificent than Jesus Christ? Even from the Quranic perspective, the Isa of the Quran outshines Muhammad, even though I don't believe the Isa of the Quran is the Jesus of history, but still Muslims think that because you believe Isa is Jesus, right? Yes. Okay, so have you seen anyone more beautiful, more glorious, more majestic than Jesus and his teachings and his description? In fact, in your Quran, the only woman mentioned by name is Mary, Maria who's supposedly the mother of Christ. She's said to be the greatest woman that Allah created. Surah al Imran, chapter 3, verse 42. Preferred above all women. Isa is sinless. Isa is the word of Allah. Sent down to Mary, spirit from him. Raised the dead. Gave sight to the blind. Cleansed lepers. Allah took him to himself. That's chapter 3, verse 55 of the Quran. And chapter 4, verse 158. Surah al Imran, 355. And Surah al Nisa, 4, 158. Allah took Jesus to himself so that he's been alive for 2,000 years with Allah. All of this said about Jesus, none of which is said about Muhammad. Muhammad's parents are not mentioned by name. None of Muhammad's wives are mentioned by name. In fact, women are not mentioned by name except Mary. Muhammad is a sinner who's rebuked, who couldn't do the miracles that Jesus did. And you're still wondering who to look to and who to follow and who to learn from? There is no debate on this. There is no question on Jesus. Chapter 19, verse 19 of the Quran, Surah al Maryam. There the Spirit tells Mary, I am only a messenger of thy Lord, sent to bestow on you Ghulamin Zakiyan, a faultless, a pure, a holy son. <clears throat> Something never said of Muhammad. Muhammad is rebuked for sins and threatened to be killed in the Quran. So you're still wondering who to follow? See, my only question is, Sam, about the, the resurrection. What is the proof for the resurrection? The proof of the resurrection is that the eyewitnesses to Christ claim that he died and rose again. Do you have no source from history related to Christianity that comes from those who knew the eyewitnesses that say Christ swooned on the cross and went to India and died and was buried? You have no source for that. All the sources you have from those who knew the eyewitnesses or claim to be eyewitnesses is he was killed, he was buried, he appeared alive physically in his body and then ascended physically bodily into heaven. So what source do you have that's more authentic or earlier that says he swooned. He was on the cross, but he passed on, was resuscitated, and then he traveled to India. Give me a first century document or a second century document or a third century document. Even when you go to the second, third century, it's going to create problems for you. I'm telling you, they preach that he was raised from the dead immortal. This is the sources that come from the time of the eyewitnesses or their followers. But then he appeared alive physically, bodily on the third day. And he convinced them that he had been resurrected from the dead. He was dead, but was resurrected. 
and he gave them infallible proofs for 40 days. And then his eyewitnesses saw him physically, bodily ascend into a cloud, into heaven. And that's what they preached. Now, I'm going to read one more thing for you. You tell me, does this not like sound like Jesus dying for our sins and being raised to life and interceding for us? Okay. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of Yahweh been revealed? To whom has the power of God appeared to? For he, the arm of Yahweh, that means God's arm is now appearing as a man, grew up before him like a tender shoot, like a root on a parched ground. He has no beauty, majesty that we should look upon him. Nothing that would get our attention like, oh, he's special. He looked like an ordinary man. Now listen. Nor appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and forsaken of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. See, he was someone who experienced pain and suffering. And like one from whom men hide their face, he was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely our griefs he himself bore. He took our griefs and our sorrows he carried. He took our pain and suffering and anguish. Yet we thought that he was being struck down, that God was smiting him, afflicting him, because we thought that he was a false Messiah. We, yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But... He was pierced through for our transgressions. He was pierced for our sins. He was crushed for our iniquities, our lawlessness. He was being punished for our sins. He was taking our punishment. The ch chastening for our peace fell upon him. The discipline we deserve because of our mistakes, he took so we could be at peace with God. And by his wounds, we are healed. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. Meaning we've run from God, doing our own thing. But Yahweh has caused the sin of us all to fall on him. So it was Yahweh who sent him to take our sins. Now watch. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. So when he was afflicted, he didn't defend himself. Like a lamb let, that is led to a slaughter, and like a sheep that is silent before it shears. When you shear sheep, they don't make a noise. He did not open his mouth by oppression. So he was oppressed and condemned. By pressure, he's taken away. Now watch. And as for his generation, meaning his ascendants, he had none. Why? Who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living? He had no descendants because he was cut off. He was killed, cut off from the land of the living. Now watch. That for the transgression of my people, for the sins of my people, he was struck down. His grave was assigned with the wicked men. So when he was killed, he was supposed to be buried with wicked men. Yet with a rich man in his death. So though he was assigned to be buried with the wicked, a rich man in death, meaning rich man took him in, in his death, and that's where he was buried. Even though he had done no violence, nor was there any deceit in his mouth, never lied. But it was Yahweh who was pleased to have him crushed, to put him to grief, meaning it was God who wanted him to suffer and die for our sins. If he would make his soul an offering for guilt, a sacrifice for our guilt, then he will see seed. And then his days will be extended. So can I ask you a question? It says he was cut off from the land of living. He died and he was buried. But then it says he will see seed and his days will be extended. How can someone be killed, have his days extended? What does this imply? Resurrection. Say it again. Resurrection. You see, I love your honesty. May God see your honesty. Okay, so he's going to be resurrected, right? Now yes. watch here. And the good pleasure of Yahweh will succeed in his end. He will then fulfill God's will in the earth. As a result of the pain of his soul, the pain that he suffered, that resulted in what? What did his suffering result in? He will see what it resulted in and he'll be happy. Because by his pain, by his experience with suffering, the righteous one, my servant, will make many righteous. That's what his suffering results in, making people righteous. Why? Because he bore their sins, iniquities. Therefore, I, God, will divide for him a portion with the many. And he will divide the spoil with the strong. Why? Because he poured his soul to death. He chose to die. And he was counted among sinners. But he himself bore the sin of many. And he intercedes for sinners. Who is this? Jesus. But this was written 700 years before Jesus. This is in the Old Testament. It's by the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 53. Written 700 years before Jesus. Now, can you explain that? Here's the link. That's a good point. And this is the passage that Jesus quoted and his followers quoted about him. So what's left? So here's my advice to you. You want to take some advice? Start reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Acts. Just take time. Ask God. Say, God, show me the truth. Just read.